Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 16th of August 2011. We have more spots appearing on the Sun today, so the chance of getting more activity on the Sun is improved. 22 years ago this day, the Toronto Stock Exchange had to close. Today's trivia question is, what event caused it to close? The answer will be given at the end. Despite all the impressive spots that I'll show you in a minute, solar activity has been rather modest. We've only had one sea flare since yesterday, and the X-ray background climbed temporarily to about the B4 level, but now has slipped back to B2. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what's going on. They numbered the region in the northeast yesterday, region 1271. Briefly for a few hours last night, there was a sunspot group emerging near Sun Center in the northern hemisphere, but this morning there seems to be no trace of it. And indeed, the region in the southeast that I predicted would have some spots is beginning to show itself. When we look at the white light movies, we see very little because all the action is near the limb and, and the foreshortening makes it difficult to see. So I've stolen a couple of uh, freeze frames from the movie to show you what's going on. First we have region 1271, which is showing a lot more spots, but it's too soon to see whether it is a developing region or how dynamic it is because it's too close to the limb. Even closer to the limb is the region in the southeast, which we probably label region 1272 tomorrow. You can see the complexity in the uh, magnetic movie of region 1271, but not enough detail yet in the other region. In the transition region movie, we have two nearly simultaneous coronal mass ejections, one off the north limb and one off the northeast limb. And again, unfortunately, Helio Viewer is not available, so I can show you details of those eruptions. But uh, you can get some idea of how spectacular they are from the movie itself. In the low temperature coronal movie, what I'd like you to do is to contrast and compare the region in the northeast to the region in the southeast. Which do you think is the most dynamic? Which do you think is the largest? Which do you think is the brightest? Because that will be some indication of which one will produce the major flares. From the Soho Coronagraph movies, we can see that we've had a series of faint coronal mass ejections in the last 24 hours. Because there's nothing much going on on the front surface of the Sun, and because they're faint, it seems most likely that these came from the far side. If we look at the solar wind parameters from ACE, we see that the temperature shown here in green has slightly increased over the last 24 hours. The density shown in orange has been bouncing around all over the place, but the velocity has been fairly constant for most of that time, but then shot up to about 600 kilometers per second and then has decayed away again. I suspect it may be partly to do with the coronal hole, but we also might have been brushed by the remnants of some small coronal mass ejection. The high energy electron flux remains relatively low, and because we've had no major flares, we're at background levels for the proton flux. The NOAA 15 satellite shows us that the auroral zone is a little more agitated than it was yesterday, and the KP index has been varying between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the X-ray background has fallen to the B2 level, the sunspot number has increased to 13, and I think it will go higher. Radio sun intensity is at 90 solar flux units. Solar wind speed is at 500 kilometers per second with a density of about two protons per cubic centimeter and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that there's a good chance of getting C flares but a poor chance of getting M or X flares. The sun spot number should be much higher. There's a good chance of getting more coronal mass ejections. Solar wind speed should remain high but the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is very poor. From the composite coronal image from the SDO and the two stereo spacecraft, we can see that the uh, two regions are now fully onto the visible disk to us. But the large region that's following them in the north is about still three to five days behind the East Limb. So if you would like to find out more about what's going on in the Sun, follow the links in the description box below. If you'd like to see earlier editions of the Sun Today or some of my other videos, go to my channel. They are all listed there. So now to our trivia question. What closed the Toronto Stock Exchange 22 years ago today? Well the answer is an X-20 flare, the third largest flare we've ever seen. It was so intense that it actually started to affect microchips in computers, so they had to close the exchange. Ironically, this flare was observed by the Solar Maximum mission, which carried an array of flare instruments. However, the flare was so intense that it heated the Earth's atmosphere and made the Solar Maximum Mission's orbit decay quite significantly and only a few months later it crashed into the Indian Ocean. Unfortunately the instrument that I was principal investigator at the time was on board so we lost that instrument. It is now probably the home for some fishes in the bottom of the Indian Ocean. 
And on that sad note, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.